All right, this graphing calculator tutorial is over how to input your exponents into the graphing calculator. I have five examples here, and once I'm finished with these five examples, you should understand how to input any type of exponent or power into your graphing calculator. Let's start with the first one because it's the easiest, 5 squared, and there's actually two different ways that we can type this in. Let me show you the probably easier way. First, we type in our base of 5, and then there's a specific square key on the calculator, and it is over here. looks like x squared. If you push this button, it will always square whatever base you had previously inputted. To simplify it, we push Enter, and we see that the answer of that is 25. So if you ever want to square something, I suggest that you use the square key. Now, to hit any power in your graphing calculator, you can use this caret key or this arrow key up here. And caret is spelled C-A-R-E-T. So I can also have typed this in by 5 to the, and then the second power. Now, this is a newer version of the calculator, so it changes it into what's called math print mode, meaning it actually looks like an exponent in here. If you want to get out of the exponent, it tells you what to do. It tells you to push this arrow over, so I push that arrow over, and I'm out of my exponent. If you have an older version of the calculator, it will just look like 5 to the second power, where the to the is represented by that caret key. To simplify it, same way, push enter, and of course we get the same answer. All right, moving on to example two, we have two to the third power. So one way that we could do it is by using that caret key that I just showed you, two, and then the caret key to the third power. Push over to get out of the power, and then enter to simplify, and this gives you eight. So again, the caret key will give you any exponent that you want to use. Now, there is actually a cubing function on the calculator. Um, it just takes you a little bit of work to get there. It's not on one of the main buttons on the calculator. It is hidden underneath the math button. First, we'll type in our base of 2. Then we'll hit math. And you can see it's underneath option 3. It's to the third power or to cube something. So you can either scroll down to 3 and hit enter, or I can just push 3 to highlight that. And notice it puts in to the third power. Simplify it, we get the same thing. So you have your choice of whether you want to use the caret key to the third power or the actual cubing function underneath the math feature. My personal preference is I end up using the caret key more often because it's less buttons that I have to push and it's already on my main screen, but you are more than welcome to use whatever is more comfortable for you. All right, so examples three through five, any exponent or any power higher than cube, you're gonna have to use the caret key. There's no special key for any of those. So in example three, we have a fraction to the fifth power. When we want to type in the whole fraction to the fifth power, we're going to have to input it in parentheses, just like it's written. So open parentheses, 3, divided by 2, close the parentheses, and then the caret key to the fifth power. Push over to get out of the exponent, and then we can push enter to simplify. Now, the concern with this is it gives us our answer as a decimal, but since our problem started out as a fraction, we most likely want to answer it as a fraction. You can always convert anything back to a fraction by using the fraction feature underneath the math button, and then option number one, convert your last sequence into a fraction. So you can either push one, or since one is already highlighted, you can push enter. So it changes our last answer back to a fraction, and you can see that this simplifies to be 243 over 32. Now, the reason that I have put example 4 and example 5 in here is to show you how the calculator deals with negatives and exponents all at the same time. And it's the way that you should be simplifying it on your own as well. Let me type both of them in the calculator, and then I'll explain it afterwards. So in example four, I have negative five to the fourth power over to get out of the exponent. 
and we see that that simplifies to be negative 625, which might be a little bit different than what you assumed it to be. But let's type in example five. Open parenthesis, negative five, close parenthesis to the fourth power. And we can see when we simplify this, that gives us positive 625. So the calculator is doing it the exact way it should be doing it. It's only going to take the power to whatever the base it has exactly in front of it. So in example five, since it has the parentheses around it, it is taking the negative and the five to the fourth power. In example four, your fourth power only goes to the base of five. There's nothing saying that should also go to the negative as well. So what's happening here is it's reading it as negative, five to the fourth power. So if I put a little separation in there, it makes more sense that that's how it's computing it. So again, there's nothing holding the negative to the five, so it's only going to take the fourth power to our base of five. And we, of course, see that that gives us the negative 625 in our final answer. So I think I have covered how to do every single exponent on your calculator. You can do any exponent by using the caret key, or if it's a square, you can use the square key, or if it's a cube, you can use the cube feature underneath math. Just be careful with those negatives and their exponents, because your calculator will simplify it the exact way that you input it. So this finishes up my graphing calculator tutorial over exponents or powers.